Where, what is the state of Christian apologetics with regard to dealing with Mormonism today? Well, back when I wrote my book in 2000, when I wrote The Mormon Defenders, uh, there was a crisis situation, supposedly, having to do with this, and there were two scholars named Carl Moser and Paul Owen who were issuing a clarion call, and they had written a, an article for one of the major scholarly magazines, and it was titled, very provocatively, Losing the Battle and Unaware of It, something to that effect. That's a paraphrase of the title. And their premise was, we are not engaging Mormon apologetics seriously, and we are not taking them seriously. The work that is out there, they said, is not adequate. And so as a response to that, they wrote this article uh, that caused a lot of controversy because of it. And then they went on to publish a book titled The New Mormon Challenge, which is another book that I would recommend on this subject as well. And they pulled together some of the other major names in apologetics, such as William Lane Craig, and had them write essays for that book. And they actually released it just about the same time I released my book. And in fact, it's kind of funny because I was going to name my book The Mormon Challenge until I found out that they named their book The New Mormon Challenge. So I quickly changed my title to Mormon Defenders. But that book came out and it did okay. It's, it's sold all right. But it's somewhat quieted down since then. I have not heard a whole lot about them lately in the last four or five years. And I have not seen really any new materials come out addressing this subject directly. There's some a couple of traditional books. Well, as we conclude, maybe this is a question that would help us in other areas. What is, how do we draw a line between being tolerant and loving and gracious in our manner, yet uncompromising in the message that we declare? I think the standard phrase of uh, love the sinner, hate the sin, comes into somewhat in play here. Uh, what I have always found it best to do after a certain time when I've picked up sources like Hopkins is I do not use their names after a while. I simply use the arguments and I put those into a different format with their names taken out. Now, and I do have reviews available of books like Hopkins so that people can have that there if they happen to pick it up. But what we should try to do is go after the arguments in particular. Yeah, just don't even name the people if we can. And that way, if the arguments come up again from some other source, we don't have to worry about naming that other source again. And it also doesn't look like we're making a personal attack on somebody. Now, there are nevertheless some people who insist you're attacking me personally even if you don't name me. But we can't please everybody. We can do the best we can simply by addressing the arguments directly. Well, you're president of Tecton Apologetics, you great internet presence. With regard to your dealing with skeptics and critics all the time, you're a historical apologist. How, wh how much activity on your site is related to Mormonism? I would say right now, uh, actually maybe less than 5% of the articles have something to do with Mormonism. I was asked to look into Mormonism uh, after some time by a young lady who had been attacked by a skeptic online. And she said to me afterwards, well, you know, I liked what you, the way you handled that skeptic. Can you also look into this on Mormonism for me? At that time, I really didn't have an interest in Mormonism, but I said, well, all right, I'll look into it a bit. And I realized some of the arguments that I was using to defeat skeptics had some application for dealing with the Mormons as well, because there were similar interpretive issues. There are many atheists who will appeal to these passages that we talked about for God the Father and say, see, the Bible thinks God is a human being. So some of these same answers came in handy talking to the Mormons as well and their claims. So there are basic principles that you can apply across the board yes. in the Christian apologetic task. So we love the sinner, we hate the sin, mm -hmm. we're anchored to the rock but we're geared to the times, yes. we have the same message but our methods are always changing. Well, JP, I want to thank you. Uh, your website is a, is, an, is a wonderful source of information. James Patrick Holding is the author of Shattering the Christ Myth. The Mormon Defenders, The Impossible Faith, and you have a new book on apologetics for children. What's that called? That's right. It's for the youth. It's called Blowing the Doors Off. It'll be out in November 2008, and it's put some of these issues into simple-to-understand language. And it's for the youth who are going off to college and are, who are going to have their professors putting some of this right at them. Now, this is an important point. You're, you're really touching a market that I think has gone untouched. If we are able, if we can inoculate our kids, if we can inform our children, then th with, this, with these tools, they're going to be able to deal with the skeptical atheist professor. They're going to be able to deal with the person uh, denying the historicity of Jesus Christ. They're going to be able to deal with their Mormon friends. Yes, they will. It seems like your ministry is providing a template for dealing with all of these challenges, and our youth, uh, above all, have to be equipped 
that's with right. this information. That's right. The foundation has to be strong. I believe there was an analogy someone made to the counterfeit money and getting to know the real money very well so that you can identify the counterfeit. Similar process here. If you know what you believe already, it makes it that much easier to defend yourself when something false comes along. And I've heard someone in the banking industry told me that very thing, that they handle the real so that when they slip in the counterfeit, there's an immediate Precisely. sense about it. So we don't have to study uh, infinite amounts of error. No. Uh, I heard someone say a straight pool cue put next to a crooked pool cue, you'll see it every time. We do <laughs> not have to become PhDs in crooked pool cues. No. And so in tecton apologetics, are you dealing all the time with people who are questioning their faith and are, are asking you questions? Yes, yes, constantly. And just this morning I have, I had a, have an email in my box from a fellow who's scared to death that he's committed the unpardonable sin. I get messages like that on a regular basis. People ask, people ask questions about some Bible difficulty. I estimate I get 150 messages a week sometimes on the busiest times. And you personally answer these and do you reference your previous articles? Yeah, as, as required, yes. That's what I'll be able to do most of the time. With regard to what we would call non-Christian groups, um, do you find that these principles apply across the board with Mormons dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, dealing with others uh, of different uh, unorthodox positions? Yes, and in fact, uh, I, when I, after I finished dealing with the Mormons, I decided, well, I might as well t talk to some of these other groups as well. I next went to the Jehovah's Witnesses, and because I had all the basics set aside already, it was a simple matter to just rewrite a few things and apply them to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Their view on salvation is very similar to the Mormon view, although it's more closer to salvation by works. So it's a simple matter to apply some of the same findings. Same thing on the Trinity. Their view is more like the ancient Arian heresy, where Jesus is a created being, like one of us. And just apply the same findings on the Trinity that I had earlier applied to the Mormons apply them now to the Jehovah's Witnesses. I was able to do that with other groups as well. So there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Ecclesiastes was completely correct in that. Nothing new under the sun. It was proverbial, but it's still true. I think an understanding of church history is an understanding of heresy and truth, and I, I pray that more Christians show an interest in yes. becoming literate in Christian history because it seems like all these views are not new. No. They're old, warmed over theological hash, repackaged, and presented afresh in our culture. But it seems as though these are the same issues that the early church dealt with. Yes, it is. In many ways, it is. The, they, some of the same. There's only so many ways you can mess up the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> there's only so many variations. I mean, you might be able to add, maybe, maybe add an extra one in there. I don't know. There's a cult out there now called the World Mission Church of God. Have you heard about that here? They believe that there's a God, the Mother. Holy Father, Mother, God. Well, they're covering all the bases. They're covering all, right. all the Father's Day and Mother's Day. You've got to buy something. There you go. Now, we're going to be doing a program on the Trinity. In fact, uh, our viewers don't realize we're going to be doing that in the next two hours. But uh, I think we'll get into more depth with regard to the distinction drawn between Christian Orthodoxy and so many other unorthodox groups. Thank you so much for joining our program. Again, Tecton Apologetics, James Patrick Holding. Go to Google, type in his name. His books are wonderful. They're refreshing. Shattering the Christ Myth, The Mormon Defenders, The Impossible Faith, Blowing the Doors Off, and you have a book on the reliability of the New Testament documents. That's in process. I'm looking to get that released maybe April 2009. Do you have a title? Possibly Trusting the New Testament. We'll Trusting think about that. Trusting the New that. Testament. All wonderful topics and all of your Bible questions. Strange Old Testament laws and ritual purity laws and uh, all of the, the funny questions your skeptical friends will bring up. Go to JP's site. I think he's typing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm not quite sure he's human. <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty human. But the man, the prolific output, uh, I don't think there's a question you could come up with that he has not addressed in a 20-page article. So go to Tecton Apologetics, and we'll see you next time on the Veritas Forum. Thank mm -hmm. you.